I believe congratulations are in order as you're about to buy your first expensive guitar. But what do you need to know? How do you avoid making some critical mistakes when putting out this significant amount of outlay for you? I'm here because I have bought more expensive guitars than I can remember. It's not a flex, it's just reality. So I'm going to tell you what I have learned over the years of buying, I think over a hundred expensive guitars. Hi everyone, welcome back. Uh, my name is Utkarsh Mohan. This is the Ministry of Guitar coming to you from Singapore. As always, if you like what I'm doing, please do like, subscribe and share. Uh, the main purpose of this is this feeds the algorithm. It helps me build an audience. And the audience is what encourages me to make these videos because otherwise I'm not doing this for money or for... Uh, it's not a career, it's just a hobby. But if without the audience, I do not have encouragement. So please do like, subscribe and share. Okay, so let's get into this. I think a lot of us may have heard of the 10,000 hour rule. You know, I forget who is it, Malcolm Gladwell perhaps. And there are a few things that in your life you may realize that you have spent 10,000 hours on. There are a few of them in my life, of course my career, which was brand management, uh, uh, playing guitar, though I'm more of an intermediate guitarist, I'm not an expert by any means. But this thing that I did not expect to spend 10,000 hours on is buying expensive guitars or rather buying guitars in general and selling of course. So this is a little bit of an accidental skill, but it is a skill nonetheless. So I do want to tell you what I've learned and to keep this video very simple, as always, I've kept it a little bit structured. So we're talk we're we are going to talk about the five important things that you need to know before you buy your first expensive guitar. The first thing that you need to be aware of when you buy your first expensive guitar is buy the guitar you want and do not compromise. Now this may sound a little silly, but let me explain. Guitars are not needs. It's not that you need it, they are wants more often than not, especially expensive guitars. And the way of the want, the way of your mind when you want something, it's irrational. It does not follow any logic. So what happens is if you're buying an expensive guitar and you don't get what you want, if you compromise, say for example, you wanted a Les Paul standard with the binding and the nice flame maple top, and you compromise and got a Les Paul studio with a plain top and no binding. This is a simple example. The logic says, hey, the studio and the standard are very similar, same electronics, whatever, whatever, whatever. But the, the irrational part of your brain and your being does not think that. So you may buy the Les Paul studio, but then you'll be back on the treadmill of, when will I buy the Les Paul standard that I want? So it is very critical to avoid buying, having so many guitars. I'm not endorsing having a large collection. That's, there's a different story on why I have it, my journey and why I keep it. Keep that aside. I don't think you want to be buying too many expensive guitars, especially if you're buying something to keep. So my recommendation to you is buy the guitar that you want. Do not compromise on something that is a similar thing, a substitute, but not exactly the thing. So just do that. And that will really help you avoid re-getting on the treadmill, on the gas treadmill or wanting something else. Okay, the second important thing to know before you buy your first expensive guitar. Do not buy a guitar just because it's on sale. Now, it's very tempting. You know, it's, it's like every impulse in us wants us to buy, especially if there's something we've been looking at, but it's on sale. But going back to the first point, if you're buying an expensive guitar, you should be trying to get what you want. So if that guitar that you want, exactly that is on sale, please go ahead. But don't let your mind and your... Uh, thoughts wander just because there's a different guitar that's kind of similar or something else altogether, something bright and shiny that's on sale and so let's buy it. That is, sales are the, literally the salespeople of consumption. This is how you end up getting more stuff than you that, that you don't need. So my point is, sales are great, but do not let that sway you into buying something that you don't exactly want, but because it has a sale, suddenly it's what you want. Uh, if you do this, You'll end up again buying, then having to sell it, etc., etc. But if you stick to you stick to your guns, know what you want, regardless of whether it's on sale or not, and you get it, you will be fine. Number three, try to try the guitar that you want to buy, the expensive guitar. And if you really can't try it, try to try an equivalent. Now, this, this advice works only depending on location. If you're in the US, you can try everything. In the UK, similar. Singapore, you're okay. India, goodness knows where you'll find anything to try. Uh, 
and also there are variants uh, there are variations between brands so if you take something like gibson you do need to try the actual thing because they are so inconsistent uh, if you try take a prs it's going to be consistent so if you try a custom 24 the custom 24 you end up buying will be consistent so my view on this is especially if you're going to only going to buy one expensive guitar or this is going to be a major purchase it's okay take your time uh, the last thing you want especially if you're not familiar with that particular model the last thing you want to say you've been hankering after getting a core custom 24 for all these years um, maybe you've tried an se custom 24 and you know you like it but do try to get your hands on a core the thing is very different so this is an obvious piece of advice many people tell you this once you become a more experienced guitar buyer you can potentially start buying on on site even then you can end up making many mistakes i have made several mistakes i've had guitars that i did not like never prs is actually more, more more like other brands but nonetheless so yeah please do try to try the guitar before you buy it number 4 this tip on buying expensive guitars is going to be an unpopular one but here's my strong guidance to you i have broken this rule once and i don't want to break it again please have a reasonable emergency fund before you buy an expensive guitar emergency fund cash reserve whatever you want to call it now why is this important this is important because the last thing you want is a situation where you are forced to sell your dream guitar the one that you bought after all these years to generate cash guitars can be used to generate cash sometimes effectively sometimes ineffectively you do not want to be put into a position where you have spent all these years dreamt got the guitar that you want and suddenly something happens in your life and you're forced to sell that guitar and maybe you're forced to sell it at a horrible haircut because you need cash fast so when you buy an expensive guitar i know it's difficult to save up and to buy an expensive guitar but please make sure you have a reasonable amount of money set aside if you don't you're putting this purchase of this this beautiful expensive guitar that you want you're putting it at risk so please have an emergency fund maybe not popular but i would highly recommend you do this number 5 be decisive when the time comes to buy your first expensive guitar now what does this mean it means that guitars are variable sometimes you want what you want and maybe sometimes what you want doesn't come up that easily so if something has come up which is exactly what you want and you know if you followed all the four steps that i mentioned earlier this is exactly what you want it's not you're not buying only buying it because it's on sale you have an emergency fund and you've had a chance to try it it's there don't overthink it just buy it be decisive so i have seen this multiple times in my own journey i'll play prs's i like prs custom 24s uh but they usually have a thin neck and i've tried all the different necks i know what i like what i don't like there was a period of time i think this was december 2021 when all of a sudden um there was a prs custom 24 pieds so because i wanted the pieds version because that's what with your band it's easier to play you can do acoustic songs as well and then there were all of a sudden there were two prs custom 24 pieds those with the bigger neck at the same time in the exact color that i wanted and i had i was not in the position that was tight on cash but let me put it this way i had i had actually bought uh you could call it a more of a more of a investable guitar very recently a mark holcomb custom 24 so i was like i've just bought a mark holcomb custom 24 i've been looking for a prs custom 24 pso with a big neck bigger neck for years this has just come up for the first time so i was really debating should i buy it is it going to be irresponsible um again i'm not advocating remember in my particular case i do have the emergency cash set aside i'm not financing anything i can do it it is just a question of me being should i do it or not then i it struck me that i am not going to find this again um so let me just do it so i did actually bought both of them both they both they both currently my main live guitar and my backup live guitar and you know what over and i keep monitoring the guitar market over the next 2 years 3 years i have not found exactly what i wanted and i sorry i should have also mentioned ebony fretboard so ebony fretboard large neck in the color that i want custom 24 pieds so it's by chance the two of them came up at the same time and i bought them but if i had not then i would still be in that search till till today so what i'm trying to tell you is that with responsible be responsible follow the steps but when the time comes if you find exactly what you want you just have to sometimes go ahead and do it 
I'm not advocating buying two guitars at once, unless you can. That's a different story altogether. But this is just an example that I could use in my particular journey that struck me as being decisive really helped. Okay, so I hope these tips were helpful. Um, all the best. I hope you enjoy buying your first expensive guitar. And if you've already bought many expensive guitars, like some of the viewers on my channel, please tell me what you think. What are the rules that you have found useful? What are the techniques that you use uh, when you buy and sell expensive guitars? Do let me know in the comment section as well. All right, take care.